What is up friends? Welcome back to my sewing channel. Today I am bringing you a new video on an old pattern on a video that I've already done. So the first video that I did that I'm expanding on today is um, the original was this retreat bag by Emmeline Bags and I lined it with wax canvas and I didn't use any interfacing and I used these um, handmade zipper tabs. But the new one that I'm showing you is the split retreat bag and it has these end caps here. And then I lined it with Colorado wildflowers. It's for a client out there uh, where it is legal. So uh, these pretty flowers lined it. But the point is that I used cotton fabric as opposed to the wax canvas. And then I also lined it. So there are a couple differences. Um, in the two videos, but most importantly, I was just showing you how to split it and at what ratios and um, yeah. So anyways, I hope that you enjoy this video. And if at any point you are liking this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment and be sure to subscribe. Every action taken on my page helps me get my name out there and I sincerely appreciate you guys being here. So with that, enjoy the video. I have all of my pieces cut for the split bag. This is going to be the top and these are three and a half inches tall by the um, 13 and a half that the pattern calls for. 13 and a half. Yeah, 13 and a half. Um, and then this is going to be my bottom and it is 6.25 by 13 and a half. And then I have my insides, these fun flowers it's for a client in Colorado um but I actually real talk I do love this print it's by Alexander Henry and it's uh the best cannabis print that I've seen out there so I did cut mine smaller than the the original pattern calls for 13 and a half by doo -doo 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 -doo, 13 and a half wide by nine and so because this is my liner I did make it smaller so that it will nest nicer and so I made it eight and a half tall by 13 and a half wide at the top. And then I tapered the bottom to 13. So then it's down in here, which I know this is probably really hard to see into, but down in here, it doesn't have a bunch of bulk and it's just sitting in there nicely. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to sew my split panels together. And so I'm just going to clip and stitch. Clip. It's like the bend and snap. The clip and stitch. I'll do that on both of them. And then once I stitch these together, I'm going to open them and top stitch them. And I'm going to butterfly these seams down, but then I'm also going to add my tag. I'm going to put my tag up here at the top. On this one, it is roughly one, two, it's about two, probably two and a quarter, two and three eighths from the top. This is a flipped edge, so I'm adding that um, seam allowance, but I think on this one, it will end up being a little bit higher, and I think that is okay. I hope. Let's see. It might impede with this fold, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to go to the machine now. I'm just going to stitch here using a quarter inch seam allowance, flip it, top stitch it. Something else that I wanted to point out, I do have my linings interfaced, and I have never used Decaville on this bag before. It's Decaville Lite. Um, Normally I make these with wax canvas inside, so there's no interfacing at all in this bag. And it has a really nice structure, it holds itself up nicely. But I wanted to try it with the deck of a light. Um, I did not do the woven fuse first. I just did deck of a light, which let's see, I did a great job fusing it. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how that turns out. I did make a noodle head pattern with SF or with a woven fuse and then the Decaville light on top of it and I found it to just be very very thick and bulky so I am just gonna you know break the rules and only use Decaville light and we will see what happens. All right now over to the machine to stitch.
I'm just going to finger press both ways really well. And then I'm going to split this open, butterfly the seam, and stitch down the sides to stitch this seam open so then it would lay nicely um, when you're doing the next construction. And this is one of three bags. Um, sorry, I had a total brain fart there, but this is gonna be a set of bags, one of three, and I normally would just do contrast stitching on the black and I would do it beige, but the other two bags that I'm making, I don't really want to um, invite that kind of pressure because a lot of the stitching on the other bags will be on curves and yeah, just contrast stitching can be very intimidating. So I'm just going to match the thread with the cord. So I'm just going to stitch down this black cork and then I'll change out my thread. Sorry, that was a really long explanation. So as I'm moving it, the bottom, the, um, the seam down here underneath, it keeps wanting to go back to one side. So I'm just lifting and flattening it using my thumb to just butterfly that seam back open and then holding it up top. And I am just going to chain stitch this. So I'm going to stitch right onto the second one as well. So I'm going to finger press. Start here. So I'm just going to open this seam and keep on stitching. to be careful not to be pulling on the cork during this process uh, especially when you are opening your seams keep pushing them open you want to make sure that you're not pulling in any direction because you can warp the cork and it'll just change the look of it once it's done you want these panels to lay nice and flat you don't want them to be wonky after you top stitch them i'm just going to trim this and then i just have to switch out i'm just going to switch out my upper thread because you're not going to see the lower. All right, so I'm just going to start at the top so you can see where the one side of the seam is now stitched and then I just need to stitch down this side too. And this is not a mandatory step, but I find that it makes the next steps much easier. Whoa, way off track. Yeah, see, so look. So I didn't realize it, but my, um, I wasn't butterflying this and I just went way off the rails there. So I'm just gonna unpick these threads and let's try that again and so i'm positioning my presser foot to be centered on my seam line here so that I have an even top stitch on both sides. If my the left side of my presser foot is now lined up with the seam that I made on the black cork, 
and the actual presser foot itself is lined up down the center on the actual seam itself and it's creating a nice 1 8 seam on either side. So now I have my two panels and I'm just going to grab my tag here. I'm just going to go ahead and stick my tag on while I'm over here centering it. I think I'm going to do it pretty close to the seam line. So I have my, I'm going to do three eighths. So I have my three eighths line on my ruler lined up on my split seam here. And then I'm going to center it so that my tag is nice and centered. So I'm just going to stitch this down. All right, so the next step that we need to do is mark our pieces for the zipper placement and then also we're going to create the boxed bottom. So the pattern calls for you to mark at one inch in from both of the top edges and this is where we're going to stop sewing our zipper which you'll see later and then on the outer or the exterior panels we're going to mark and cut out a two inch by two inch square can't tell if you can see that, but two inches by two inches over here as well. And then now for my lining, on the wrong side, I'm gonna mark the one inches again at the top here. And because I want my lining boxed bottom to nest nicely within the exterior boxed bottom, I'm also going to make it just a little bit smaller, just like I do with every other measurement for my linings. And so because this called for a two by two, I'm going to make the inside 1.75 by 1.75. So now I just need to cut all that. I've already marked my um, other pieces. Is it straight? So funny, it's like you use a ruler, seems like it's straight, but it's not. Whatever. It's going to be so negligible at the end. And as we all know, straight lines are not my forte. Alrighty, let's cut these out. I need to get these scissors sharpened.
around a corner, so I'm just going to hold this on there and use it like a template. Okay. Alrighty then. Okay, so now we're all prepped and we need to work on our zipper. So I have a 16 inch cut of zipper. Um, let's see, the pattern calls for a 16 inch zipper. So there we go, nailed it. Um, so I'm just gonna put my zipper head on. I'm gonna burn my zip tape first. I'm gonna actually cut a little bit more off of one of these sides. I feel like this makes it easier to see with it being staggered. I feel like this makes it easier to put the zipper head on. So I'm gonna start sliding it on the longer side. If I can. There we go. So I've got that locked and loaded. And then now, because I trimmed this to be a little bit higher, when I start, when I tuck it into the zipper and I start zipping, hopefully it'll let rest a little nicer and avoid the big, oh, psych, and avoid making a bubble. I just need to like get one of those little thingamajiggers or make one out of a fork. So there we go. So it did make kind of a bubble, but that's fine because I'm just going to pull it all the way to this end. And then once I get done there, I'll just pop it open and then no more bubble. All right, so I'm just going to trim this back down because now what I'm going to do is instead of doing my ends the way that I did on this one, I am going to use zipper ends. I've only used these a couple of times, so I'm not super graceful. I mean, this whole process isn't graceful for me, so we will get through this together. Okay, I'm back. I found a little guy. He stole my other one. It's like I said in my last video, we're doing a kitchen renovation, so all of our tools are just everywhere, but Apparently he stole my other one and now it's all messed up per his diagnosis. But anyways, so in order to make this go into here, I'm going to put some glue and then I'm just going to fold and then fold again, clip, and then do it to this side. And then once it's inserted into this end cap, it'll be a nice uh, professional zipper. All right, so I'm actually gonna fill this cap with some glue. If you've never used these before, they come with these little bitty, 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 tiny screws. And that screw goes in that hole. So after I insert the zipper into this, I'm gonna screw the zip or the screw into it and then it will hold it all in place. You can see, so gluing and clipping this zipper tape like that is just going to allow me to insert the ends together. Um, I know a lot of people use like Gorilla Glue or just, uh, I can't remember the other glue. Um, it comes in a metal tube and that works as well. But as we all know, I love my beacon. Okay, so I just put a decent amount of glue in that cap, take this clip off, and I'm just gonna shove her on in there. I 
and then I'm gonna put just a little dab of glue in the hole. All right. And then I'm just gonna screw this in. All right, so it's, it's on there. I'm just gonna scrape off any of this ex excess glue here as I can. It's like all over my fingers, I'm just making it worse. So there we go, so that is one end. You see, so it just makes for a nice professional finish. Now we get to do this other side. So this side obviously will be a little different because it's uh, not attached to, each, to each itself. Um, so what you can do is you can sew a seam across the bottom, which I'm gonna go do that just because that's gonna make it so much easier. So BRB. So I went over and I just threw a couple stitches across the zip tape here to hold it in place as well as possible. And now I just need to do the old fold and glue method. So If you guys noticed, but I got this cool new mat. I went to my local quilt shop and picked it up. I initially wanted a bigger one, so I hadn't broken it out, but I figured this old busted mat, I still have it under here. It's just so ratty and I was like chipping it just because I've had it for so long. This one's so pretty and new. Okay, so I think this glue has probably set enough. I'm gonna just put some glue down in here. So I'm going to, this one does not go in nearly as easy as the other side, but I'm just going to jam her in there. I feel like that's in. We're going to go with that. So just put a little bit of glue in here. Oh my God, I'm like just getting glue everywhere tonight. All right, so put this little screw guy. Okay. Gosh, that was a feat, huh? All right, so we have our zipper. And I did get some glue residue back here, but I will just go in a little bit and um, use some nail polish remover and get all that off. So moving on to the next step is we need to make the zipper sandwich from our exterior lining and our zipper. And so first I just wanted to show you the size difference in my exterior and my lining. So you can see where I tapered it in and then even my boxes are smaller and then it's about almost three quarters of an inch smaller on the bottom. And again, that's just gonna make the inside seat very nicely into the exterior at the end it will be all bulky and bunched up um also the original pattern calls for fleece to be on 
uh, inside this bag, but like I explained earlier, I'm just going to try it with the Decaville light and see how I like it because I've noticed even in this bag without any interfacing at all, I really love the structure of it. It's not overwhelming. It's not heavy. It doesn't add to the overall weight. I personally am not a fan of foam or um, of fleece, which is what the pattern calls for. Sorry if I said foam earlier. I'm not a super big fan of fleece. I find it to be heavy and it's just like, I don't, I don't know. It just makes everything feel like a blanket to me. But anyways, so working off of our one inch lines that we marked earlier, I'm going to put glue on my exterior here and get my zipper glued into place. And so you wanna make sure, I always like my zipper to open from the left side and this is gonna be my front. So you wanna make sure that your face, your zipper tape is face down and the zipper head is to the left if you want to do the same as me. And I'm just eyeballing the center here and then I'm just gonna apply pressure to glue it into place. The bottoms of my zipper came out so differently that it's kind of hard to get a really good eyeball on it. But I think that'll do. All right, so now I just need to lay my lining. And again, we're skipping over the first and last one inch of the zipper tape here. And then you lay this right side down. Make sure to line up your top edges. And then I'm going to throw a couple clips in here. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch. I'm going to start at this one inch line and back stitch well here and stitch all the way across over to this other one inch line at this end. So I'm going to start sewing up here at the top and I'm going to pull my zipper down and out of the way so that I don't stitch over it for that one inch that we have previously marked. So back stitch well and then once you get to that one inch mark you're going to sew up and onto your zipper. Back stitch well at your one inch mark on this end and then again pull your zipper out of the way and line up the top edges of the exterior and interior and continue sewing. So I have it the first two layers top stitched and you can see because we left this section out that is going to allow the zipper to hang off like this one. And so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna open and finger press so that your pieces are laying wrong sides together. And we're not gonna top stitch right now, we'll top stitch later on. And then we're just gonna repeat that process for the other sides. Trying to get every last drop out of this glue. If you use it, then you know how expensive it is. Don't want to waste it. All right, so being sure to line up both of my exteriors, I'm going to lay the zipper tape on this raw edge and apply pressure. Okay. 
Okay, and I just need to put my lining down. And if you notice that it's just not all lined up, just push it around until it is, these raw edges. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time you lay it. All right, so I'm pop back to the machine and stitch across the same way. All right, so being sure to pull my zipper out of the way and keeping my exterior and interior lined up, I'm gonna start stitching at the top to that one inch line. and then just continue stitching across. Pull the zipper out of the way down here. Keep on trucking. So we are now all sewn together. What we're gonna do is flip and just finger press. Make sure that everything looks good down here before we move on to the next step. Um, you may have already noticed, but in the original pattern, it calls to do a slip pocket here and I omitted that. So just a detail. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do, very, very important step is we're going to unzip our zipper. And we're gonna fold our exteriors together and our linings together like so. I am going to be diligent about matching my edges here. And then you're just gonna start clipping into place. So I'm gonna match both of my seams and then start clipping around. I am going to, oh, that's whenever you get to your zipper, make sure you tuck it in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna butterfly these seams open. The pattern doesn't call for that, I don't believe, but it'll just make it easier for sewing later. So butterfly, make sure they line up and then clip it. And then I'm gonna switch and do this side. All right, and then we're just gonna work our way around and clip into place. You wanna make sure that everything lines up as much as it can. You might find that with sewing your zippers that um, things might have shifted. So just try to line up as best as possible. And then the pattern calls to leave a birthing hole open at the bottom here which normally when I'm sewing bags, I install a pocket so that I can avoid the birthing hole just because on the inside of the bag, when you're looking in, you know, you see that bottom seam, but you know, I'm just gonna do it as the pattern is written this time, which is weird for me, but all right, so we're all ready to go. I'm gonna pop over to the machine and I'm gonna start sewing down here. And I'm gonna start with my traditional L. I'm gonna come in with my L and I'm gonna sew to the end. And then I'm gonna pull and combine those two and continue sewing onto this edge here. If you've ever watched my mini box tote sewing, or yeah, my mini box tote PDF pattern, uh, if you've ever seen that video or really any, the range backpack I do this method. And when you join the seams like that, then when you open and you flip out the bottom box, you'll see they just come together perfectly. So, all right, let's get to it.
this is what it looks like all done. You can see it looks a little bit funky, uh, which is totally fine. And now I'm just gonna go and trim down the seam allowances down here towards the bottom just a bit. And then across the bottom for sure, because if you have a, a big seam allowance across this bottom seam, when you tuck your lining inside the bag, it's gonna cause it to stick up more, which it's already going to stick up because of the seam that you make. So I just like to make it as incognito as possible. So trimming up the sides here. Now I'm not super worried about these corners here, but I am gonna do the same on the lining. All right, so we have all of that done. Oh, I wanted to point out, you might have seen it in the video when I was sewing, but I backstitch a lot. Anytime that there's gonna be a stress point, I back, I add a lot of stay stitches. So when I was going over these seams, I stitched back and forth, even when I was going over these seams, because when you sew up and over a butterfly seam, a lot of times your machine will make a longer stitch than what you have it set to, just because it's going up and down uh, multiple layers. So I like to just ensure that it's a nice tight seam there and it's not going to expose the stitches once it's all flipped. Okay, so now I'm gonna reach inside my birthing hole. I'm gonna finish, un or I'm gonna unzip the zipper all the way, reaching all the way down here. I'm gonna poke this corner out. And you see, oh, sorry if you couldn't see that. I'll show you on the other one. But it, because the way that we stitched it, you can see it makes these edges line up perfectly, or these seams rather. And then I'm just going to lay the seam, lay one side going that way and the other side going this way, and you can feel it. You can feel the seam bump up against it themselves. And that's when you know that it's lined up. I'm gonna just clip all the way across. All right, so I'm gonna go back in. And then I'm just gonna pop the seam open. And then shift it until they lay next to each other. I'm gonna do that around the other side as well. All right, so now I'm gonna go back over to the machine and I'm gonna stitch across all of these using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim down all of these seam allowances, trim off any threads. over here messing with stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna reach in and I'm going to turn it right side out through its birthing hole. I like to push the corners out 
when I'm doing the turning process, it makes it easier. And you can see because the way that we boxed those edges, it lined up those seams so nicely. So if you're doing different color sides here, that method will really help make sure that you have nice lined up seams. And then the edges over here are pretty nice too. So I'm just gonna push everything out, pull it, roll the seams in my fingers. And then just gotta flip the lining all the way. This Decaville light is super stiff. I like it. I think it's gonna provide a lot of nice structure for this bag. All right, so same thing, just gonna poke these corners out as well as I can. And then now we need to close up our birthing hole here. And because we had, we started with a little L shaped, it should make it easier. So I'm just going to push out on this bottom seam and pinch it. Same thing over here. And then pull it taut. And then if I was using anything other than Decaville Light, it would have just flipped right in. But anyways, it'll flip in and line up nice and neat and even. And so I'm just going to clip that into place and then go stitch this hole closed. I'm going to use a really, really close, scant 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm going to start all the way at the end and go all the way across just for continuity purposes. So I'm going to sew from corner to corner. Okay, so we've got it all closed up, and now we just need to flip our lining into the exterior. And I'm just gonna start by rolling it at the top here. And then just push her on in. You can see, because we didn't top stitch, it's gonna be a little bit wonky. So you just wanna roll those seams and you can feel the zipper pull out towards the top. And then on these edges here, get my zipper. Come on, guy. There we go. You just want to, I, I generally kind of pull on them, but this is a super thick seam right here. Just, you know, FYI. Sewing with cork and then also the deck of a light and then the lining is just makes for a thick seam so push your corners in down here in the bottom get it nice and situated and so before i put the frame in you can see that it's nice and nested it's not bulky or bunched up anywhere it looks good in there and then the next step is now we need to create the channel for our wires for the frame. Give it a rogue thread. There we go. So the frame, it sits in between these two channels here and it is what gives this bag the structure it needs to create that fold over look. If you wanted to, you could just leave the bag as is and just top stitch once and then you would have, you know, just a standard <laughs> triangle pouch. Um, but if you want to do the frame, then we're going to first, we're going to like, we're going to push our seam down and around. We're going to top stitch like normal. And then we're going to go down about a half of an inch and stitch the same thing all the way around to create the channel. And then we're going to go in and push our frame inside of the lining. 
Now I'm going to show you on this bag. You can see because it does get super thick and bulky with the cork, I do not try to sew over the side seam. I start and stop my stitches just on the outside of that seam line. And so that's what I'm going to do with this one as well. So before I go to top stitch, I'm just going to kind of pull on the zipper and roll the, the exterior and interior between my fingers to make sure that it's seated correctly. And I want to make sure that my zipper is straight, that there's the same amount of zipper tape showing all the way around. And then I'm just going to clip into place, makes it easier so things don't move. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could make the marks here for where you want your stitch lines to be, but I'm using thin handmade frames. They're not super thick, so I know that I don't have to do a really wide channel. Uh, I can't remember what the pattern calls for, but it might be a little bit wider of a channel, but use your discretion, check out the pattern, and um, you know, make your own choice. To make this next step easier, I'm going to remove my table and that will make it easier to stitch around the bed of my machine here. Another thing is that I have two different threads in now in my machine. I have the beige color that I'm using on the cork and then I have black for the lining. And the important thing that you want to remember with this is that they're the same weighted, the same weight of thread, otherwise you're going to have some tension issues. and so. Both of mine are Guterman, and um, I am confident in the tension as it's going to be, but just take note of that. And so I'm going to start on one of my side seams. I'm just going to push the bag down, and then I'm going to start probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch from this side seam here so that I don't have to sew over that bump. Be sure to back stitch well. I like to stretch out the bag and get a nice straight line before I start sewing. Otherwise, if you have to stop and start again, that's when your stitches can go wonky. So just go slow and get as much of the bag straightened out as you can. Needle down start. I have found that if I do have to stop and shift the bag around, which you will at some points, in order to make sure that your stitches don't go haywire, you can lift your foot and just kind of realign everything. And then again, just sew slowly. Once I'm getting close to this other edge, I find that it's easier to push the bottom of the bag up so that this part of the bag lays flat instead of trying to wrap it because the bottom of my machine is not open. So yeah, it, you can try pulling the machine up and it'll create the exterior will lay flat. All right, so then I'm just gonna skip, skip right over that thick seam and keep going. All right, so now I need to do my second line for the channel. So I'm going to keep my bag on the machine and I'm just going to scoot down and I'm lining up my zipper tape with my one inch line. And that's going to create about a half inch channel to put my needle through or to put my uh, frame through.
Now we have all of our channels sewn. You can see there. And because this is where I skipped over my big seam, I'm just gonna go back and I need to trim all of my threads now. And you can see the inside channel I did with the black thread. Now we are ready to insert our frames. And the way that we're going to do this is we're gonna insert them from the inside of the bag. Um, just looking for my seam ripper. All right, well, I just looked everywhere in my studio and I cannot find my seam ripper anywhere. And I had a bunch of old ones, but I gave them away to a friend who was learning how to sew. Uh, anyways, so I need to get a new pair of seam rippers, I guess. Um, I'm going to use my scissors to do this, but what we're going to do is on the inside, on the seam of the lining, you're going to snip those threads very carefully to create an opening. And I'm going to do it on both sides. All right, so I have a tutorial on how to make your own of these uh, for the teddy backpack, but for this bag, this is a size small retreat bag, you cut to where you're gonna have two inches here, nine inches across, and then two inches back down. And so I made two of those frames. Um, there will be a card up at the top right of this video that you can click on to learn how to do this. So I'm just going to take this and insert it into my channel. And it can get a little wonky over here because the seams that are butterfly open, sometimes the, um, the wire frame doesn't wanna go all the way in. So there we go, we've got one all the way in. And now I'm just gonna do the other side. And so you just wanna make sure that your ends are hidden inside your side seams here. And then you can kind of bend it however you'd like. If you want it to be a more straight, like a square or a rectangular bag. And then you just need to train it closed. So just close it, zip it and then you can just start manipulating the look of the bag. It's not bad for a first pass, but what you can do is you can pull these ears to stand to stick out more or you can push them down to be uh, flatter. But I kind of like the look of this as is. A little bit uneven, but yeah, so to train it to say, to open and close nicely, you just want to open and close it a lot. And so you're just going to push forward and then zip. And you'll find that the more that you do that, the easier it becomes to open and close. Once your frames are trained. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. As always, be sure to like, comment, share, pin, subscribe, um, you know, all that fun stuff. But most importantly, be kind to one another. Thanks, guys. See you next time.